I am doing this simply because I have had so many new beginnings. So I call my thing here a new beginning. OK? There was a long time I wanted to go to UWE. I'm here now. No, I didn't pass to get in. I played the fool all over the place. And that is how I get in here anyway. And I find that's very unfair to all the people who go to UWE. All this pressure they have to go through to pass and excel. And they watch a big man playing the fool all over the place and ask him to come in here. Hmm? Anyway, with all of that, I feel I know why I was asked to come in UWE. I have a story to tell about my very hard, hard climb to success. And I feel very honored to be able to share it with you. Believe me, climbing is not very easy when your parents are absent. Let me give you a review of this journey I had getting to this place where I am right now. There is something that I found out when I was little. I found out that no matter what anybody wanted from me, the only way I would have gotten that is if I wanted that same thing too. I was at that stage once in my life when I had to make things happen for me. You will get the rest of the story. There was something I craved for when I was a little boy, just having someone there to support me. The Larry Joseph that you know now came about as a result of me wanting something better for myself. At that little boy stage, I had to dream. I had to wish. I had to focus as a little boy because I had no parents. I had no uncles and aunts around, nobody. Only God knows how it happened to me. I think, I, I, I view my coming into this world as this. When I was born, my father took one look at me and said, eh, eh, that am I. He ride out. And then soon after, my mother decided, you ain't leaving me to take care of this thing by myself, you know? She gone too. She dumped me in an orphanage right out to, and only God knows how I made it. Now in my time, school was not as compulsory as it is now. You had, to want to, you had to want school really bad for you to really get an education. I was one of those people, I wanted an education really, really, really bad because I already had a disadvantage. And that was the only thing that was going to help me, my education. When I became a teenager, my mother, who was virtually absent from my life before, thought that this was the best time to take me. She took me because she thought I was ready for work. At age 14, I didn't know her, she didn't know me, and I doubt she knew who my support really was at the time, but I knew it was divine help. God was watching because one year after she took me, she abandoned me again. And I was angry. I was really angry because I was safe in the orphanage. The nuns loved me. I was getting food. The nuns taught me how to be kind and patient and helpful. I was taught all of that by nuns. And I didn't know what to do with all of that in the real world when my mother left. But you know what? My anger at that time, took the form of a promise to myself to make my mother regret she did that to me. I planted the seed in my mind that I will be a success and one day make my mother want me. That's how it was at that time. That is probably what helped me to become who I am today. Can you imagine if I had directed my anger in the, in the, in the wrong place? The way people do now, when you are left to fend for yourself in a world like this, there are only two directions you can take. The good one or the messed up one. A lot of people don't realize that life was meant to be easy. But I realized that early in my life. So patience was my tool for climbing. I had, I had decided at that point that I was never going to give the devil a ride on my life because he would always want to ride and then without knowing it, he becomes 
my driver and I become his passenger and I'm no longer in control. You give the devil an inch, he takes a foot and then he takes a yard and then suddenly you realize you're a whole mile down in hell. I knew then for the rest of my life I was always going to deal with these things. And as a teenage boy who had nobody, I had to find ways to deal with it. Ways that could change my situation. Because at this point in my life I was living on the streets now. I was on the streets. A lot of people don't believe when I tell them that I used to live on the streets. Do I look like I live on the streets now? No? My clothes are still old, you know. I still wear normal clothes. You know why? Because I don't want to forget. Like I said, my mother abandoned me a second time at 15 because getting a job was too hard for me at that time. I was too young. I had no one. The Larry Joseph that you know now was just a little teenage boy trying to survive on his own on the streets in Tunapuna and hoping to finish school. I wanted a secondary education so badly. You know why? Because most of my, 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 the people before me had none. Okay? My mother didn't have one. And it was the norm for people like me to continue that cycle. And that's why I wanted it. I wanted to change things. And as I said, I said no to, 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 to keeping the cycle going. I did eventually get my five GCU levels. And I did that on the streets, working at it. No mother, no father, and working on my own, you know. And at, the, at, at that time, five old levels used to be, a, to be like a degree, you know. When you have five old levels in my time, let me tell you something, you're bright, you know. Yes, people used to look up at you. People used to watch you and say, well, you bright boy. Oh, yes. I was not ready to take on the world with my degrees. You know, I, I, I mean, I see people now going to schools. They have it so much harder these days because <laughs> we all know what a degree is now. It's not five whole levels. But it worked for me in my time. I found out then in my time that my journey had just started and it got really rough because I had nobody still and I was still a little teenage boy. I have noticed that some people who are in similar situations that I was in now use it as an excuse to commit crimes and distress people, make people's lives miserable. My education gave me the freedom to choose and that's why I wanted it because I had nothing. It gave me the space to grow beyond my wildest dreams. And right now, trust me, it's beyond my wildest dreams. I get to go places I never dreamed of. I get to go places, fly to places free. I get to stay in five-star hotels free. I never dreamed of those things, but it's happening to me now, all because I was persistent. I got all of that because I studied business and trade and commerce and I still practice those things now, business, trade, commerce, okay, even though I'm doing this, okay? I'm a clown now, but I'm still practicing business, trade, and commerce. It makes people who hire me realize that I don't clown around with my fees. And I'm very, very, yes, and I'm very, very happy that I studied at that time. Because look at what it's doing for me now. Now let's go back to my childhood. It's a it's really, really tough when all you get as a child, I'm talking about me here, when all you get as a child from anyone is a derogatory statement to you, something that hits you like licks when you misbehave. When somebody tells you something nasty, I got a, last, a lot of nasty talk from people when I was a teenager, plenty. Now that has the effect of peeling off your self-esteem like the skin off an orange. I got a lot of that when I was a teenager, and tell, let me tell you something, I was messed up, I was, I was flat out. Those things used to take me to the top of a hill, where in front of me, all I saw was nothing else but open space. I'm standing here, and I'm looking out there, and there's nothing. That's how my life was. So let's picture me standing on this cliff now. I am faced with a frightening thought here. It left me with just two choices at that time, either to jump and end it all, or 
start at that moment to believe in myself, which is what I did. I changed the course of my life for myself. I was still a teenager when that happened, you know. And I found out during the passage of my life on this earth at that time that no one is responsible for my advancement or, or my success but me. It's the most difficult place to be as a teenager when you have nobody. You might not have seen me here today if it wasn't for my perseverance, my, my, my pushing and everything. And I'm thankful I found that early in my life. I was called all kinds of things when I was growing up. All kinds of things. I was called stupid. You know who used to call me stupid? The people who used to call me stupid were bajans when I was little. Okay? And I used to outsmart all of them. Because bajans just beat people, you know. So I used to outsmart them by being, doing exactly what they're calling me. Stupid. Eh? <laughs> and all they used to do is laugh at me. And you know what? I wanted that. I wanted them to laugh, 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 get distracted from me. You know why? Because I didn't used to get no licks. It used to be nice. It used to be safer. People are still laughing at me now. Bajans and everybody is still laughing at me. I meet some of the same Bajans these days, and they come and laugh at me. The good thing is, they're paying to do it now. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, people used to call me ugly. Am I ugly? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I know it's not so. People used to call me ugly because I used to make a whole lot of faces when I was little. You know, sometimes I, <gasps> and I'm doing all kinds of things with my face. And they call me ugly. And they used to be serious about it. They used to believe it. What's good about it today, what I did was take that ugly and packaged it. And it's giving me a living now. The same people who call me ugly are the same people who pay to see me. That's weird. And there was also a time in primary school when I was very, very little, when my principal told me. He was, got vexed with me because Larry Joseph is always talking, talking, talking. I didn't know I was going to be doing that now, but Larry Joseph is always talking, talking, talking. My principal looked at me one day and told me in front of everybody, when you grow up, you're going to be one stupid fool. And I cried, I cried, I really cried because you know why? He said it in front of all the children. It hurt. I just wish my principal was alive today to see me now. Yes, if he was alive, he would know that what he was saying to me was the truth. <laughs> I came out a stupid fool, but it's packaged and it's being sold. <laughs> you see, I learned how to do these things when I was little because of my disadvantages, okay? Yeah. All the things people used to tell me long time was supposed to make me feel inferior. I didn't stand a chance, you know. But you know what? Let's go back to the cliff. I'm standing on top of this hill on that, by this cliff. I stood on that cliff and stared in the direction. I was being pushed by everybody. And I said to myself at that point, I didn't choose this destination. So I just stepped back and went in the direction I wanted. I don't know how difficult it is to have one parent to guide you, you know. I don't know how difficult it is to have one parent at, at your home. But could you imagine having none and being the target for every negative missile people have to throw? I used to take the missiles, but I used to make them bounce off for me. Okay? That was my life as a teenager. The one thing I learned then when I was a little boy was how to disconnect from negatives because I found out that any negative is just a short joyride that could plunge you in a deep hole or give you a good opportunity to prove the negative wrong. I choose the latter. I did that all the time. When I was living on the streets, I remember one night, I was about to sleep in this old car. It used to be nice, you know. My mother didn't love me, so, you know, I was on the streets and I was happy. I went to sleep in this old car, and something started crawling on me. This snake decided to cuddle up next to me as a friend. 
I gave him the car for himself, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. I found a nice spot on the pavement to sleep. That's probably why I'm still here alive today talking to you. Because this snake was so pretty. It was beautiful. Pretty. Nice lines and stuff like that. Coral. But I told him, if I wanted to see coral, I would go to the coral reef. Oh, yeah. There are lots of things in this life that seem pretty and nice and easy. I am quite happy that I never got any of them easy. Because it caused me to be realistic and more creative. Anything that is too easy for me, I got to be very, very creative because of the hardship. There are too many people in this world who are bitter and jealous and vexed and procrastinating and all kinds of things. I never adopted those. It slows me down. I ain't adopting those things at all. I found out a long time ago also that sowing seeds of hate and bitterness would only bring me fruits of nastiness. The last thing I want in my life is bitter because bitter don't taste good. I would rather have something more desirable to eat, something that when it digests, it does not give me a bad stomach. Bitter doesn't factor into my plans. Because I love me, I, I have learned to love me because nobody loved me. Loving me makes me do nice things for other people. And that's why I'm here today. Because I never thought that I would have been able to do this when I was called about a month ago or so. Because I was going to be busy. And I tell myself, I have to make this. I have to make this today. Okay? I have the greatest respect for single mothers. I don't know who came up with the idea that women are the weaker sex, you know. Sometimes they make us men look so weak. Mind you, I have a great amount of respect for single fathers too because they do a whole lot too. Single parents do some unimaginable things and that's where most of my material come from. You want to know where I get material? I look at people's situations at their homes and their jobs and stuff and that's where I get it from. I just stand there, macro them, encourage them to talk, and then I take it and package it. Okay? Now, I don't talk to people personal business. But the important thing is that I find my material in that kind of way. My material comes from the things that affect me the most in my life. It makes me want to talk about it. What goes on in the neighborhood, in the home, infidelity, love, children's issues. I get material from observing people, talking to them, reenacting their experiences in, in, in my skits, and making them laugh at the same situation that they cried about, keeping abreast of current things that are happening so as to stay relevant today. I guess that's why I'm still doing it, because I'm relevant. I'm staying within the, 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 the confines of the time. Okay? A lot of people who do the work that I do, they still in a void, still somewhere else. They're not realizing what's happening today, and that's why things go wrong with them. Now, I am not very passionate about politics, because reason, most of what happens does not have longevity in politics. You do a political skit, and then it gets stale after a few months simply because the government changed, the people change, etc., etc. I don't do that kind of thing because it doesn't last long, okay? I like to do things that, that, that you will, one day, 20 years from today, you would still want to see it, okay? And that's why I do this, the kind of stuff that I do. That's why I like playing me as a schoolboy on stage because I've had so much experiences with playing schoolboy, playing miserable and all kinds of things, okay? And then, of course, politicians lie so much, you know, you... you I like the truth. Now, here are some, my, some of my thoughts. Anything that comes easy, because these are things that I've learned over the years, eh? anything that comes easy leaves easy. And it comes at a price. And in some instances, there are no discounts. So let's hope the price is not too high when it happens. There is an excuse that some people use for distressing others. Poverty. These are my thoughts. He who gets rich by any means possible is not wise. Poverty gives a man a chance to achieve. The people who survive the best in this world are poor people. I was poor. 
Some of the most successful people in this world were, were dirt poor. I was dirt poor. Now I own some dirt. <laughs> Come on. I didn't want anything too easy. Because when you get things too easy, it just leaves you, you know, and, and then you don't even realize it's gone because it was there. It came so... I want to be honest with you, you know, people. Very honest. I feel very strange here today, you know. Very. I am happy that somebody thinks that I could make a contribution, you know. Because I never thought that I would be doing this, you know, this, this kind of thing. During my life on this earth, I have seen people who have made fantastic contributions to community and country and just died. And that's when people realized they were here. I don't want those things to happen to me. I don't mean to be cynical or suspicious, you know, but I have been doing what I do for so long, I, for the longest while. I have climbed so many mountains, so many high mountains. I've been in some really rough waters during my life's journey. I did not come from a broken home, you know. There just wasn't a home. I was always on that precarious path all my life, all by myself. And I believe that I still have more ground to cover. Now, I started by saying that I want to be honest with you. And I want to stay honest with you, people. I am grateful for this honor that you bestow on me here very grateful. But there's a danger in this where people expect you to become a role model. Role models become public property. I don't plan on going there. And a role model, instead of staying real, you turn into plaster seed. Anyone can mold plaster seed and make you what they want. Most People, role models, that is, end up becoming someone else. So let me make this very clear to you. I will always be who I am and say what I feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind.